Hi, everyone. Welcome to Drupal Long-Term Support. Uh, if you'd like to run out to another talk really quick. <laughs> uh, if you're in the wrong room, go now. Uh, I'm Jeff Sheltron uh, from Tag One Consulting. This is Jeremy Andrews. Uh, we initially wrote this talk uh, with Nat Ketchpole. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't be here at the conference, um, but I've been communicating with him and fixing all my mistakes in the slides thanks to him. So any mistakes are mine and Jeremy's. His. Mostly mine. Uh, anyway, I'm Jeff Shelter and I'm a senior infrastructure engineer at Tagline Consulting. Uh, I've been involved with Drupal since my previous job at the OSU Open Source Lab. Uh, so I don't know what that was, 10, 12 years ago, got into Drupal. Um, I'm also a member of the CentOS uh, QA team. So I'm pretty involved with Linux and systems administration and uh, just LTS support for software in general. And I'll let Jeremy give a quick introduction as well. Hi, um, I got started with Drupal in 2001. I had a, uh, a blog called Kernel Trap that was running on PHP Nuke, and it crashed a lot um, every time I got linked from Slashdot, and Dries reached out and said, hey, we're writing this really cool new CMS that has something that no one else has. It's called a page cache. Uh, it's not done, but it's gonna be really great. And uh, then he sent me access to drop.org, which predated Drupal and Drupal.org, and followed up with another email that said, by the way, that's root access, and please don't delete anybody or change anything. Just you know, look around and see what you think. Um, and that's been uh, a great and consistent experience for me in Drupal, which I've really liked, is that everybody's, yeah, always great. Um, that was version three something. Um, I've been actively writing core code since Drupal 4, and I like to be involved in this long-term support. I like to make sure that no one's left behind. Um, I'm curious, does anyone here have a Drupal 5 website? Besides you. <laughs> All right, Drupal 6? Okay, Drupal 7? Drupal 8? Is anyone on Drupal 9? There was a day where someone would have been on Drupal 9. All right. And Nat, who's not here, is uh, the Drupal 8, one of the branch maintainers. Um, and it's unfortunate he's not here because he has all the answers for this. <laughs> we sure talked ourselves up. <laughs> uh, so I quickly wanted to kind of cover some terminology we're going to use in this talk. Um, specifically, LTS, um, meaning long-term support. Um, that's kind of a widely used term uh, in the Linux world. Um, kind of more so now uh, as we're thinking about doing such for Drupal. Um, the, the exact definition of LTS for Drupal is actually up in the air still. Um, kind of the, the uh, agreed upon definition is something like as minimal possible changes and fixing security issues. Uh, what that actually may look like in practice, we don't know yet. Um, and it may be different for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Um, and definitely those will be different from what happened with Drupal 6, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, and the next term is EOL, or end of life. And in the in Drupal context, uh, what that's referring to is a release that's no longer supported by the community. Um, so anything Drupal 6 and previous are EOL releases. And I think I'll let Jeremy cover kind of the, yeah. the history of how we got to where we are with Drupal 6 LTS specifically. So Drupal 6 was the first Drupal release that had a significant number of uh, Drupal websites left on it when it decided it was gone end of life. Um, and what that meant was that people were unhappy about that because there are over 100,000 websites still using it and we didn't want to just abandon them. And so it was, an inst it was the first instance where the Drupal security team supported um, more than two releases, because there was eight, there was seven, and then there was also six. Um, there was a, a three-month window where the community supported it for uh, security back uh, patches. And during that time, um, they reached out and got several vendors involved. Um, so. Yeah, we're one of the, the three vendors. There was Acquia, uh, MyDropWizard, and then Tag1. 
Um, we have a product called Tag One Quo, which is awesome. And if you have Drupal 6, you need to, you need to check it out. Um, the, uh, the, the, the key takeaway, though, with this is it's called Drupal 6 Long-Term Support, Drupal 6 LTS. Uh, which is confusing because LTS has a new meaning for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, so I think of it as extended long-term support and it's paid long-term support. Um, the way that it works is that if a paying client of one of these three companies has a module and, and there is a security release for Drupal 7 or Drupal 8, uh, we backport it, we release it publicly, um, and we make sure that our clients get it. Um, so what that means is that if no paying client um, uses a module that you're using on Drupal 6, uh, it's not going to get backported as part of this program. Um, and that's, you know, it, it's definitely a different, uh, different system, uh, but it's nice because the patches are out there. And um, specifically, if you go to that URL, you can find every patch that has been released for Drupal 6 long-term support there. Uh, our, product, our product is Tag One Quo. I won't go much into the advertising except to say that if you're on Drupal 6 and you don't have security patches, um, we're giving away, a, we have a promotion right now where it's uh, three months free. And that means you know any modules you have, we'll backport them for you. Um, there is manual effort involved, but uh, sign up now because it's the best time to do it. Uh, get your site up to date. And um, it also supports Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Um, but yeah, that's Tag One Quo. Okay, so I'll talk a bit about what's happened in a year and a half uh, since February of last year when Drupal 6 was end of life. Um, at that point, there were roughly 115 or 120,000 Drupal 6 sites reporting to Drupal.org. Uh, and that's gone down over the last year and a half. Uh, the latest report from this month shows 65,000 sites reporting, so roughly uh, cut in half the number of reporting Drupal 6 sites. Except I'm gonna cut you off for one second. Um, we wrote a crawler to go out and try to figure out who actually is on Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. And while that, that is true for sites reporting back, there's almost twice that many that aren't reporting back, so it's over 100,000 Drupal 6 sites still out there. Um, we also did a campaign to contact some of them and say, hey, we have this service that you can use. And it was interesting, like a fairly significant percentage of people said, wait, what? My Drupal 6 site's still up? I didn't even know that. Um. <laughs> and I guess interestingly, that, that's only covering publicly facing, publicly accessible sites. So who knows how many internal sites there may be on Drupal 6. Uh, so in that time period since it went EOL and has been supported by these three vendors, there's been 25 patches released. Um, one of those was for core, and a whopping five have been for views. Um, which is nothing bad against views, but it just so happens it's had a lot of security fixes in the last year and a half. Uh, and just, I think this is kind of self-explanatory, but the, uh, what are the, some of the benefits of long-term support? Um, basically, it's giving sites a chance to last longer on their current code without having to jump into an upgrade that they don't have developers for, don't have money for, uh, and it also is just a way to have a stable code base that's only receiving uh, security fixes. So you don't want to take a chance on whatever new features. Uh, it's going to be a much more stable code base. To, to add to that also, though, um, from like our perspective with Quo, in addition to this, this is uh, kind of community focused. We also, you know, we're, we don't, we're not trying to pressure anyone to, to upgrade from Drupal 6 to 7 or 8 or whatever. We're going to be around as long as people are using Drupal 6. There's still 10,000 Drupal 5 websites out there too, which we're not supporting, but they exist. So we're, uh, yeah, anyone on Drupal 6, you're not being abandoned as long as it makes sense to use it, which for some people it still does. Um, and so Drupal 6 LTS has been pretty well defined. Um, What's not well defined yet is what's going to happen for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 and beyond. Uh, so we want to kind of take a look at the current status of issues and discussion on Drupal.org um, and hopefully get some discussion here in the room about it as well. Uh, looking at Drupal 7 specifically, uh, there's currently just under a million sites reporting Drupal 7 back to Drupal.org. Um, so it's pretty clear that at whenever it is that Drupal 7 goes end of life, it's going to be a lot more sites 
still on Drupal 7 than were on Drupal 6 when they had EOL. Um, so it's something to consider. This is going to have a much further reaching impact than the Drupal 6 end of life. Uh, and like I mentioned, it's still up in the air. There's no date set yet for Drupal 7 LTS uh, or end of life. Uh, and LTS in this context means something slightly different than uh, Drupal 6 LTS, which is supported by the three vendors. Uh, when I'm talking about Drupal 7 LTS, what I mean is a long-term supported, community supported version of Drupal 7. Um, and the plan is to whatever the last release of Drupal 7 is would be an LTS release, uh, where for some undefined period of time that's going to be continued to be supported by uh, the Drupal community and Drupal security team until it goes end of life. Um, so there's kind of an open question also, when that end of life does happen, uh, does it make sense to do a, a similar handoff like was done with Drupal 6 where the security team kind of uh, stopped supporting uh, Drupal 6 and handed it off to the vendors or is there some other better option? or? or no option, I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and the question is in part, in, in large part dictated by um, the capabilities, the, the time capabilities of the security team. You know, it's, it is voluntary um, and it, it is going to make sense at some point to stop supporting Drupal 7, um, but that's also gonna depend on just at what point the people involved in Drupal 7 don't want to support it anymore. There's lots of discussions out there. There's proposals out there. It does not look like it's happening anytime soon. Um, you know, it's going to be at least a year and a half out, I would say, is the earliest where it would, and, and this is where LTS would start. And LTS will then go on again for, you know, don't quote me on any of this, but a year, year and a half probably as well. So there's, there's, there's many years of usable Drupal 7 lifetime left. Uh, Drupal 7 is also a bit of a special case, as we'll see. Um, but things are improving in Drupal 8 and beyond um, that should simplify upgrades and hopefully make this more of a solved problem and less of a pain point like it is right now for anyone on Drupal 7 wondering when they need to make a move. Uh, do you want to cover this one as well, Jeremy? This is basically a, a summary. If, if you want to look at Drupal.org, these three issues I pulled out uh, are where most of the activity is happening around Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 LTS and EOL discussion. Um, and the current summary of this, um, you want me to jump in or you? Sure, go for it. Is uh, the commonly accepted proposal that uh, both Drees and the core committers seem on board with is start Drupal 7, have an LTS release only once the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 migration is, is fully supported. And migration is fully supported is maybe a kind of vague definition. Uh, it, it, I, I think we all that. heard Dries' keynote. He said there's still 12 blockers. Critical uh, block. 12 critical, critical blockers. So, you know, in my opinion, maybe that means when those 12 blockers are done, uh, someone else may have a better uh, opinion of, of what that actually means. Um, but that's kind of what they're aiming for currently is, is have an LTS release once the migrate's complete, once D7 to D8 migrate is ready. Um, and then have a D7 end of life uh, right around the time of the Drupal 9 LTS release. And Drupal 8 is even more complicated. Uh, if you thought 7 was bad. Uh, Drupal 8 theoretically will have an LTS release sometime around the Drupal 9.0.0 release. Um, whether that's going to happen before or after, is it's up in the air. Um, we're going to get to some more detail on that in a minute, actually. Um, and the, EOL, the end of life for Drupal 8 is also undecided. Um, will it happen after the 10.0 release? Uh, potentially extend till a 10.0 whatever LTS release of Drupal 10? Um, or even depending on how the Drupal 8 to 9 and 10 migrations work out, maybe Drupal 8 doesn't need to stick around as long. Maybe it could be end of life even sooner if there's a super simple upgrade path to 9. For, for anyone using Drupal 8, um, I'm, I'm actually curious to understand. So part of the confusion that we're, uh, we're talking about is that we hope things are going to be a lot better 
um, and not so so it's not confusing because we just don't know what we're going to do. It's confusing because if this works as we hope it does, fewer people get left behind, fewer people get stuck on old releases. Is anyone so we're up to eight four in about a month? I think is when that comes out. Is anyone in on eight point zero still, or eight point one, or eight point two? So everyone, 8.2 and then 8.3, anyone else that's on eight? So that's, that's a great sign um, that people are succeeding in upgrading and following these releases because uh, I don't know how, how closely you're following Drupal 8 development, but some more significant changes are being made during the 8x development process and, uh, and it's working. People are upgrading. Uh, there's, do we talk about backwards compatibility later? Yes. Okay, then I'll wait to, to jump there, but. Um, well, we'll yeah. get there. Let's cover this and then you can get there. What's that? Uh, so this is basically, this is an example image and I didn't create this. I pulled it from uh, the release cycle overview URL you can see there. Um, and this is kind of to give you an idea of what it might look like. You can, you're, you're already gonna notice that Drupal 7 LTS has not happened yet, like has happened on this timeline. Um, and also I think what, something a little bit confusing about this gr chart is uh, the mention of security fixes only. Uh, there's kind of some confusion about if there's a difference between an LTS release and then it's locked down even more and there's security fixes only. Um, I think actually the LTS release would be more or less security fixes only and, and, and there something would only critical. be some very yeah. critical bugs fixed if those are found. So this is going to loop, loop back more to what Jeremy was talking about with the Drupal So there, there's a lot of interesting discussion out there. Um, Nat, in particular, is, is leading the charge on this. And, and the good news is that this is being talked about not because it's happening tomorrow. It's being talked about because Drupal 6 was the first time we had any LTS. And we know it's going to happen again with Drupal 7. So we're, we're planning ahead. Um, and so um, with Drupal 8, uh, the, the goal is that we don't do Drupal 9 until we literally need to do Drupal 9 for some reason. Uh, what Drupal 9 will mean is, is you know, anything that's been deprecated is gone. Um, but in Drupal 8, uh, an example Nat gives is, you know, well, let's say we want to completely rewrite the forum module and completely uh, replace the back end, how it works with entities. Um, it's possible to do this in Drupal 8 and to do it as a minor update. And, and the way that would work is the old forums module would, it, no one's rewriting forum right now. This is just an example. Um, but in any case, um, the old version of the forum module would still be there. Uh, you'd probably remove the UI, so you wouldn't be using it from the, the user interface. But then the new version would go in there, and they would, they would be simultaneously both supported through different namespaces. Uh, any code that you have that depends on the old forum module would continue to work because all those API calls, everything is there. Um, but then, Anybody who's you know building new websites would use the new system, and then for a series of, of minor updates, it would be there. So we're talking six, 12, 18 months um, that during the ADEX process, you would have both of these APIs there, and any contrib modules would have a chance to to do this migration. There's lots and lots of warning, and and it's not only a chance to do it, but it makes sense to do it because you know, all these Drupal web, 8 websites, it's, it's live. It's not something in some future release. It's part of what everybody's using. Um, the people on 8X here, you know, they're, they're keeping up to date and they would keep up to date. So the goal is that as a contrib module maintainer, you've got plenty of time to, to bake the switch over. Um, the old forum code would only be released then, when, or removed from the code base once 9X goes out. Um, so there's, there hasn't been an example yet of anything significantly changing like this. It's all talk. Um, but there also, no one's come up with an example of how that's not gonna work, how it's gonna break. So that's definitely where things are leaning right now. Uh, in these issues, Dries does weigh in and, and several other core uh, committers. And I mean, this, the, 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 the verbiage up there is something like, you know, this is the plan, uh, but we're open to change it at any point. So if, if we have a better idea or if it doesn't work for some, some reason, then we'll change the plan. And the, the one other thing I wanted to call out from this slide is um, there's actually a recent issue open, this 2909, la, 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 um, proposing what if we could extend the support for Drupal 8 minor releases? So, for example, support 
8.3 for maybe a few months after 8.4 comes out. So there's not that immediate like, hey, 8.4 is out, go upgrade your sites today, have fun. Um, kind of give people a buffer to, to be able to upgrade safely and do some more testing. Um, there's actually no discussion on this ticket yet, so I'd love if everyone hops on there. But uh, basically at this point, it's just a proposal. Uh, in my talking with Nat about that issue specifically, um, he agrees that actually that would likely be very trivial, a very trivial amount of work for the core committers and security team because almost any patch would be able to be directly re-rolled back into the previous 8.x release. Um, so I think that makes a lot of sense in my mind. And, and that, that makes a lot of sense as well because you know if, if you look at the differences between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, uh, even there, it's not that much work most of the time to backport patches from Drupal 8 or Drupal 7 to Drupal 6 when it affects people there for, for long-term support. So certainly between the eight-point releases, it's going to be a lot easier. And did you cover everything you wanted to about the this kind of... Um, the, on the only other piece of that is that... Um, when the other piece of this is uh, Drupal 8 um, is wonderful. It's, it's, it's a good system, but it took too long. Uh, you know, there, there were mistakes made. Uh, one of the great things about Drupal is people talk about that and they're public about it and you know, it's all part of the community. So these tickets go through and Nat in particular details some of the, the things that could have been done better, the problems that we want to solve. Um, so, so part of that is the goal will be when we release nine, um, you know, for starters, 9, 9x development will start in parallel, um, so that when it actually gets rolled, it's ready to be it's ready to be used, and it's going to be you know the 900 release is not going to be a drastically changed system from the eight the the eight dot last whatever releases. Say it's eight dot ten for example. Um, so going from Eight, the last 8x release to the, the first 9x release should be as simple as each of these um, simple 8x updates you've been doing. And, and if this works, you know, this, this is a game changer for Drupal. Um, that means that people will be able to stay up to date, um, will be able to really, you know, over, slowly get rid of, uh, uh, you know, our, our technical debt, um, but continue to make changes. Um, in the discussion threads, you know, there's some concerns about, you know, the internet moves really, really fast, and if we're always trying to be backwards compatible, is, is eventually Drupal going to get left behind? Uh, it's an open discussion. It's possible that, you know, 9 will be a nice smooth upgrade, and then 10 will be a, another major change. Uh, again, there's just an awful lot of unknown because that's, right now, 8x is working very well. <laughs> <clears throat> and we actually intentionally left this talk pretty short because we're hoping to ha answer some questions or have some discussion about whether it's D6, D7, D8, and beyond. Um, so Fantastic. And there's a microphone. Please come on up and use the mic if you have any questions or comments. Hi. Um, actually, I have two uh, questions. Uh, the first, um, when there is a security update, security advisory for a Drupal 7, 8, uh, country model, uh, how the three vendors or three companies work together or separately uh, to make it possible to be patched on Drupal 6? Okay. That's the first. So, yeah, great question. I was actually supposed to tell you that without being asked, but thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have members on the uh, Drupal security team, and so when the patches, we know before they're released, as everyone on the security team does, um, that there's a security issue. Um, but it's not anything that gets talked about publicly until the patches are out. Um, so everybody in, in the, uh, the companies that are doing this is, is involved in that. Um, somebody does a backport. Um, if only one of us has a client that has this module, then obviously that person is going to do the backport. Um, otherwise, it just it just depends, but in any case, uh, it gets reviewed uh, on the, through the security team, so anybody in the Drupal security team even can look at the Drupal 6 patches and sometimes do. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful team. Uh, people are really cooperative, um, but yes, we always try. Our strategy is not to push the patch out as quickly as we can, um, but to take it you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. If it's super critical, it's got to get out there quickly. Otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll take up the 24 hours to do heavy testing and make sure that by the time it gets out to people um, that it solves the problem. 
Um, the, with Drupal 6, uh, the patch will, cannot be released until the Drupal 7 or 8 patches are out there. Um, but technically, ours can go out you know, a minute later, and sometimes it does, depending on you know, how, how much testing is required for the changes. Um, and again, regardless of who wrote the patches, they're all on the project on the D6 LTS and all accessible to everybody freely. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, for a second, um, a few months ago, it happened um, kind of a lot of months ago, uh, when there was for um, ADA3 a core uh, sec update, uh, and it got also uh, released for ADA2, like, I don't know, over half a year ago. No less than half a year ago, doesn't matter. Um, what do you think if something similar will happen when uh, A.4 in the next week or two weeks later um, will get out uh, and an update will happen, a security update for A.4, uh, will it be kind of automatically released with uh, A.3? Or what is the strategy? Do you know anything about it? Uh, officially, officially, there's going to be one supported branch, 8.4. Um, but as you saw with that example, uh, it's also going to be sanely done. And if it's an easy backport and a critical backport, you, it, it would be very surprising for it not to get backported. Um, it's, yeah, it, it, there's a limited amount of time, but we're not going to make silly choices also and say, well, we're not supporting that. It's not a corporate decision. It's very much a community and support the community decision, which is Drupal. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I have maybe a related question. It's not directly related to Drupal versions itself, but backward compatibility, what you mentioned. I have recently have one issue on my conf module, like uh, Drupal supports PHP point mm -hmm. five point three. I don't know. <laughs> Can you make these changes? So... It's also related to this long-term support. Will the, the, it, uh, it exists some discussion about that, that Drupal maybe move fa faster with minimum requirements like PHP 5.6 is slower supported or I don't know how, it's, how we look on this. Well, it's problem for contract models, I don't know, in several points to support PHP 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 7, 1, 7, 2, okay. and we can go on and on. So I think it's related to this topic, uh, how Drupal can move faster in terms not only the code, but the code and infrastructure. So, so each, each, I'm not sure I understood the question actually. Um, so each version of Drupal has a minimum requirement for PHP. And are you suggesting then for in the 8x branches that we keep raising the, the minimum PHP? Yes. yes. So basically for Drupal 7 LTS, I, I think it doesn't make sense that somebody, even if, if he runs, I don't know, Drupal 7 in 2022, that he had right. PHP 5.3 on the server. So. so what I can say is that we have uh, Drupal 6 clients that have upgraded to a more modern version than is supported by Drupal 6, um, which works quite well in most cases, and it involves testing. Um, so it is possible to do that, but I think Jeff is better suited to answer this in the sense of what you're really looking at is um, working together with you know, the Linux distributions that yeah. are packaging up PHP. And hosting companies which are not yes. upgrading PHP and so on. But my thoughts, is, uh, thoughts are like that. If community invests more time in latest software and minimum requirements, mm -hmm. if I have company, if I have my websites on some shared hosting, I'm some small site builder and so on, and I cannot uh, I don't meet minimum requirements, I will go to a company which has, I don't know, PHP 7 or something like that. I, I think yeah. it's much simpler than, it's look, than, it, than, than it looks from now. Like. I, I think, per, speaking personally, I, I like having the lowest possible minimum requirements. Yes. Um, I, I'm also the maintainer of the memcache module, and I did some did some recent uh, testing to compare you know PHP five some different versions of five and PHP seven, and I mean it was a two x speed up just by switching to PHP seven. So on one hand, absolutely PHP seven you should be using it if you can, but if you can't, um, yeah, yeah, there's no I, reason I, to leave it yes, behind. I, I, yeah. I, cannot, uh, I cannot think that we drop PHP five now. Okay. 
For example, in PHP 5, Drupal 7 now supports PHP 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6. I think uh, PHP 5.6 is like the minimum requirement, right. and any modern hosting has uh, probably seven. But <laughs> so with LTE in various Linux, I mean, what is Red Hat's probably still way back there. Yeah, I mean, that's the issue with uh, languages like PHP on the long-term supported Linux. Uh, so uh, most, a lot of people are running Red Hat Enterprise 6, for example, and that was released with the PHP 5.3. Uh, so Red Hat is still minimally backporting security fixes to PHP 5.3, theoretically. Uh, I haven't actually seen any recently, <laughs> though I don't watch that closely. Um, there's workarounds, obviously, if you can control the servers. So uh, Red Hat has a thing called SCL. I forget what actually that stands for, but it's a way to slot in different versions of, of languages like PHP, or you could actually get like Apache 2.4 onto Red Hat Enterprise 6, where it shipped with 2.2 and still supports 2.2. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's ways around it, and there's no great answer to it, really, because everyone has different needs. Uh, some people want to be on 7, some people want to be on 5.3 for the rest of their lives for some reason, just they're afraid of change. I don't know. Or they have custom code that's just too difficult to, to upgrade. Um, like Jeremy said, we've had a number of old Drupal 6 sites uh, that started out on probably whatever version of PHP 5. Or even 4, yeah. Uh, go to 5.3, go to 5.6, and we're seeing some using PHP 7 uh, with very minimal changes from my perspective. Um, and nearly all the changes are in custom code. Uh, there's a bit of some contrib module cleanup, but nothing major that we've seen. I mean, I guess it'll come down to when there's a PHP feature that, you know, is profoundly better for Drupal to use and to make that a minimum requirement. Um, Actually, for the migrating, not migrating, but from uh, changing... Actually, can you, uh, talk into this, the microphone, thank you. Trying to a little bit help you. Um, there is a sniff, uh, a code sniffer provided sniff uh, that can check your code. Is it kind of ready for uh, PHP 7? You just uh, execute it as a PHP CS uh, with the right sniff, uh, and it tells you uh, what are the changes that you have to uh, make in your code, even though um, Drupal Core 7 and 6 are totally fine. Uh, mostly the contribs are good. Uh, but the custom, there can be some tricks that you have to change and you can use it uh, to PHP 7. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Sure. Okay. Uh, having in mind the introduction of Drupal 7 long-term support, as you have explained, um, and that the transition from eight to nine should be almost seamless, let's say. Um, we hope. <laughs> in, in an enterprise context with a lot of like 100 of Drupal 7 websites and a lot of customizations, do you think um, it, it should be better to invest already in a Drupal 8 migration or wait for Drupal 9? Even, you know, there, there have been a few core security updates on Drupal 8. And you know, for an enterprise, it might not be easy to to upgrade hundreds of websites with a zero-day vulnerability, something like that. What is your opinion? We get that question a lot um, <laughs> through Tag One uh, when people ask whether or not they should update. Um, I would say that Drupal 8 is mostly ready for you now, and and that as an enterprise, you can probably afford to do it, and if you can't afford to do it, um, it, it is, you know, if you're sticking with Drupal for the long term, this model that a Drupal 8 is moving towards is working, and so we expect it to be around for a long time. Um, it, it comes down to how much you can invest as well, though. I mean, are, are the contrib modules you need there? If not, can you help get them there? If not, then the answer is no, it's not right for you. Uh, if you can, the community can absolutely use that, and there's still lots of modules that are being ported. Um, 
Yeah, uh, from, from, from another perspective, I mean, I, Drupal 7 is not going away anytime soon from the community perspective. And, you know, the tool that we built, if it does go away from the community, we're going to keep supporting it as well. Um, so it will always, to some degree, be supported. Um, it's just a question of, you know, what's more cost effective for you and, you know, what features do you need? And um, it's definitely time to start looking, though, if you haven't already. Drupal 8 feels like a really big change, and, and then the more you use it, the more you realize it's, you know, it's Drupal. It's still Drupal, and, you know, in good and bad ways. <laughs> Cool, there's silence, so I guess we're done. I've been asked to remind you all, you've probably heard this 50 times, uh, there's sprints on Fridays, or, or Friday. Let's do them every Friday. Yes. Uh, sprints on Friday, uh, come on down, have fun, and uh, give us a good or bad survey response if you enjoyed the talk or not. And thank you all for coming. Thanks. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Yes. Right. You're correct. We're not. The two of us are not. Yeah. But I work with him, and we talk to him daily. So. <laughs> Which one was this? So you're referring to Drupal 6 specifically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're looking to backport patches there, or you're looking uh, to? That, that's also possible by me, because uh, huh. I still have uh, a few projects behind yeah, okay. Drupal 7. Uh, Drupal 7. So I, I'm, I'm also trying to, to work for that. But okay. still, you know, uh, right. 7 is my main profile, and yeah, yeah. I'm trying to push everyone to 8. So, so I do know that there has been at one or two patches that was contributed by the community. Um, I don't know if, if you were involved in that. Uh, and, but unfortunately, the reality is that um, we don't put our stamp of approval on it if, it's not, if there's not a client using it. Um, because once we've done that, then, then we're technically supporting it. So the only way to do that is to invest the time of testing it, you know, spin up a website with whichever modules and, and test to make sure nothing breaks. So, yeah, so the. find out the points when you have to act? So it's all automatic. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's automatic in, in the sense that it raises a flag that says somebody has this module, there's a security release, you know, and now to, to turn that flag off, we have to look and see does, does this security of, uh, issue in seven or eight affect the six one? And then we manually do that in yes or no. If it does, we backport it. Or if, yeah, again, it's, it's uh, being used by a client. Um, does that answer your question or no? I'm not sure. Uh, my question or my concern is yeah. like how I can help you uh, for my free time. 
Yeah, because so you ha so ultimately that's that is the rub um, in that. Is there a reason why not? Have you? He's uh, working on getting uh, his access. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I didn't ask him for, for yeah. that, uh, but like uh, for instance, the uh, FD Live button uh, that was uh, fixed by me um, was a stupid issue that was e hmm. almost immediately fully fixed or. Um, yeah, it should always be quick. By one of you, uh, and actually, why not try to? Still, we don't mind. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't bother me, seriously. It really. But, but it will not yeah. get uh, the advisory, advisor link. Right. So, so publicly, the only way you're going to learn about it is by paying attention. Uh, yeah. There's no subscription. Well, actually, yeah, as far as there I understand is. it. Yeah. Maybe my Drop Wizards, you can use their module and learn about it Maybe without a pay are. thing. I'm not sure. Um, with ours, so no, you're either a customer or you're not. Either. Sorry? To so know that it's there, right. It's not like. Yes, but it would be manual, right. and you would have to, like, w w with our service, you would only be notified of patches that affect you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not automatic in that sense, unless unless you've signed up. Um, there's no way to, like, say, hey, there's this security issue coming if you want to help backport it, because we don't talk about it until yeah. it's already public. And once it's public, we've 99% of the time, we've already written the patch. Um, we might still be testing it. And, and sometimes it's really helpful to, to see how the Drupal 7 or Drupal 8 patch goes too, uh, because there's enough similarities that sometimes we've had, when we like views, I think was one that um, there was a uh, backported patch that had to have another backported patch because of not understanding some fallout. And it affected those releases too. So we try not to. Not in Drupal 6, though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I Yeah. So test, test the Drupal's testing framework was just simple test. It's Drupal 7, yeah. So. Yeah. And you always write uh, automatic tests for, for those kind of. Not in Drupal 6, no, we are not. Just manual tests. So yes, it's very manual. Well. Okay. Manual, and, and then sometimes even like working with clients to say, okay, here's the patch, here's the things that we are concerned <laughs> about. Absolutely, and really? and people are more than happy to be involved in that. Um, cool. While we yeah sell it as it's an expert service, you know we do all that testing. Absolutely, we'll flag if we think it may or may not be a problem. Um, mo most of them are not, um, yeah. and then occasionally the ones that you think aren't can be. I mean, it's little things like the letter T instead of the letter T S or something, and yeah, and you're like oh yeah. Or sometimes there's core bugs that aren't exposed until we backport a security fix, fix, which is like, oh wow, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. but you know, it's it's still interesting, even though it's Drupal six. And um, so I, I don't know if I've understood your question. You're trying to get on the Drupal uh, the security team, correct? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm trying. I'm on the path. Okay. And are you? Process. Yeah, there is yeah, a process. There is a pretty long process, by the way. Are you close? <laughs> You're passionate about it. That's good. I'm super passionate. <laughs> Fantastic. And does Michael know this? Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay, he's kind of my mentor. Okay. Oh, oh cool. Well, that's a that's the perfect mentor to have. Actually, yes. he's great. And he, if if he knows and, that you're and interested. He's crazy also. Yeah. In a good way. Nice. In a perfect way. Nice. That's cool. Thanks, guys. So, did you want anything with Nat in particular, or you just were hoping to meet him, and that's all? So. Uh, I just wanted to meet. Okay. Him. Yeah. Sorry to spoil that for you. <laughs> 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 yeah. Cool. Thank you. Well, good luck too. Yeah. I'm sure if I'm wrong. You're wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm so, wrong. Sorry, I was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you. Uh, I read somewhere in uh, Drupal 7 when I visited the site in 2021. You, then uh, you're wrong. Yes. Because there's no one that knows. It could. It could. No, I, I read it somewhere in Drupal.org. That doesn't mean anything though. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but I mean, Drupal.org uh, has comments. Definitely no. So and, and if if they they've actually been it may have been an old post you being was older. I mean I feel like lately all the all the references have been around other release timelines yeah. and no dates are set for those really. 
It'd be, I'd be curious to know who wrote that. that yeah, 